Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeaham Sri Guru Sri Yutu Parakamalam Sri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate E tapta kanchana gorange rade vrinda vanishpare vrishavanu sute devi panamami hari priye vancha kalpa truviascha kripa sindhu vahevacha patita nam pavine vio vaishnave viho namo namaha jai shi krishna chetanya prabhu nityananda shi adveta garadara sivasari gora bhakta vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're going to continue with devotional service. And today we're going to look at the blocks that we need to actually avoid. The obstacles that we need to avoid um, in actually practicing and advancing in devotional service. wrong place same slide but wrong place this is the right slide right place so we need to look at the obstacles we need to avoid on the path of devotional service uh, it's very very important that we actually understand this or else we will make very very bad and costly mistakes so in spiritual life there are certain numbers that are really significant for the devotees there's four regressive principles. We have to be mindful to those. And these are not things that are optional. Actually, they're mandatory. So four regulative principles. They are the four legs of Dharma that we have to understand what they are and how to comply with them. They're the four yugas. We need to understand that in different yugas, different actually required or prescribed methods of worship are there. We need to be aware of that. And then there are 10 events to be avoided. And then there are 16 rounds to be chanted. These numbers are very important. So I'm going to try and slowly get devotees and get us share as best I can get us to understand. Because if we don't, we have a desire. We, 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 we love Krishna. We feel you know, an energy. We feel an attraction. But then we're not, we're not going anywhere. We're spinning our wheels. We can spin our wheels and become frustrated if we don't understand that if we don't get these things right, and unless we get these things right, our devotional life will be stalled, hampered, and even, you know, uh, making no progress at all. So I'm also going to try and talk less and ask for more engagement. So can somebody please explain to me what the four regulative principles are? And also why they're important. Not only we know what they are, but why are they important? What's their significance? Somebody say. Is there anybody out there? <laughs> Cleans cleansing Let us. Can I well, you, can, you can both speak. You can both speak. So whoever wants to speak first, but I'll take both of your comments. So don't worry. Yeah. You speak first, other person. Who, who was it? Hare Krishna, Mataji. It's um, Pitambar here. I, yeah. um, I, there's cleansiness. And um, I think there's truthfulness as well. But first of all, you give me, there's four, there's four regulative principles. They're, they're listed. Um, repeat them, but then if you can explain why they're important, then that's what I want to hear. They're there. Are they there because somebody just said, just do this, or is there some scientific, real good reason why they're there? I want to hear your understanding. Okay. Um, 
there's no meat eating, no no eating um, anything which has contains other living souls. Right. And there's no um, and then there's no gambling um, right. because you're trying to bypass karma by winning. Um, then there's intoxication, which is um, thamogon, which gives really bad rise to rajagun as well, and you can make a lot of bad mistakes through alcohol. And then there's also um, illicit sex. Uh, this is relationship outside marriage and even within side marriage because it's all to do with them um, procreation for Krishna. Otherwise, it falls under sense gratification. So um, cleansiness is one of them. I th and there's also austerity, but I can't remember which way around they go. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a chance to actually tap into that in a moment. But for now, Mataji, you were speaking. You were saying something. You wanted to comment? <clears throat> I think uh, uh, he has explained quite nicely. Uh, I was going to say in simple language, like we should not do meat eating yes, because sure. all living entities have a soul. And uh, so if somebody eats us, it's not, you know, how do we feel? So in the same way, we shouldn't be eating other living entities. Right. And, uh, uh, and gambling is also not, I mean, I, I can't explain as but much better as he explained. <laughs> I just I'm want your comments. Language. It's your comments. I'm deliberately yes. getting whoever to make their comments because when you hear your own voice and you have to vocalize it, it becomes more important for you. Yeah. So no gambling is also, uh, you know, it's a, it's a thing for people who does not believe in hard work and who believes in luck and Krishna says we should do our duties rather than depending upon luck you know so in that sense gambling is also not good yes. and is intoxication also because if we are intoxicated like people who are seen in my life people who you know uh, drink alcohol and all you know they have so many encounters with accidents and and sometimes they do some stuff which they regret later in their life. Mm. So, so that's why we should keep away from intoxication. And no illicit sex also is not good as it, it destroys many people's life who indulge into that, you know. And, as, you know, you read so many like cases of divorce and things like that. So that's what I was going to say. Okay, that's very good. Thank you very much. That's good. So those four regulatory principles are there and there's no getting around them. We have to abide with them and follow them very strictly. You know, but they're there to help us. The four regulatory principles are, are effective and essential in helping to protect us, you know, so that we can practice the four principles of religion. So there's a connection and we want to see the interconnectedness. Unless we can practice, Hare Krishna. Mercy. I remembered another one. Mercy. That's the animal okay. killing. Okay. Sorry. But you're going, to, you're going to be able to see them in just a moment. But the connection I'm trying to make for, for us is that the four regulative principles, they're effective and essential in helping us. They're designed to protect us, to lift us up to the right platform, and then enable us to actually follow the four principles of religion and dharma. So before, we, unless we practice the four, you know, uh, regulative principles, we won't be able to practice the four principles of Dharma. This picture is a very nice picture because the way the artist has done it, it, it tells a really nice story. Does anybody know this story? It's from Srimad Bhagavatam. Does anybody know this story? This is where Maharaj Parikshit saw Kali Yog and um, was about to slay him. And then Kal Yog said, please don't kill me because I've, I've also got, you know, this is my allocated time. Right. Um, so can I stay in four places, please? And Maharaj Bhikshar said, uh, which ones? Oh, yeah, Maharaj Bhikshar said, you can stay where there's gambling, uh, meat eating, illicit sex. And um, uh, what was the other one? Smoking. And, um, and then Kal said, oh, this is not enough. I need something else. And he goes, where do, would you like to stay? And he said, on your in gold. That's it, in gold. Okay. And um, and it just happened that Maharaj Parikshit was wearing a gold crown, which later affected him. Hare Krishna. Very, very good, very good. You know, because um, 
every time that we have to relate, every time that we have to draw on our memory and our understanding, it strengthens it. So in this case, I remember my Gumraj, um, His Holiness Krishna Swami giving a very beautiful class on this, very beautiful class. He really went into detail. He said, when Richard Maharaj challenged Kali, and, you know, first of all, Kali was dressed as a king, presenting himself as a king. But then he was doing something that kings would never do, beating the legs, you know, of this bull. So when Richard Maharaj came across him, he challenged him quite straight away. And he could, Kali could see that is no match. So straight away, he threw off his crown and then fell on his knees and was offering obeisances and begging for mercy from, you know, Richard Maharaj. So he then, being compassionate, he said, okay, but you can't stay in my kingdom. But give me somewhere to stay. So he gave Kali those places to stay, as you've just mentioned. You can stay in those places where there's animal slaughter, where there's illicit sex, where there's gambling, where there's intoxication. Those places you can stay. But we also need to understand that Kali could practically not find those places at that time. <laughs> they weren't available, practically weren't available. But as he was, as soon as Lord Krishna finished his pastime, so 5,000 years ago, as soon as Lord Krishna wound up his pastimes, then Kali started. And all those places have been increasing, increasing, increasing. And the best example to give you of the increase, you know, Guru Maharaj used to speak about it, that when he was growing up in Bharat as a, as a boy and a young man, you know, Gomata was so nicely protected. She was very well protected. There was no open slaughter houses and everything like that. Not saying it didn't happen, but it wasn't open. But now, and then Bharat as a country was not an exporter of beef at that time. All of that started over the last 20, maybe 15 years. Now Bharat is one of the biggest exporters of beef and hides, the uh, Gomata skin hide for leather. So Kali Yuga has been expanding and expanding and expanding its jurisdiction into those four categories. So the point that Guru Maharaj made on that day that stuck in my mind and in my heart is that if we do not follow these four principles, it means that you're hand in hand with Kali. You're hand in hand with Kali Yuga. Imagine, put it in a crude way, imagine you're in a castle and your castle has got walls all the way around it, but there are four gates. There are four big gates to your castle, hmm? you know, and the compound. Now, enemies there attacking all the time. Which gate are you going to open? Is there any gate that you think will you should open? Are you going to make sure all the gates are closed and enemies are attacking you on all sides? So what happens when you leave one gate open? Then the enemy can come through that gate. So if you actually use your own mind, your own imagination, whatever appeals to you, to be able to understand that these four regulative principles, they guard us against the attack of Kali. And if we cannot actually, you know, uh, follow these principles, it means that we're going to be open to the attack of Kali. So we need to be mindful and see and make the connection, see how they're all kind of interrelated. And then the four legs of Dharma, this is what you were trying to say, Prabhu. So the four legs of Dharma, you know, the four legs of religion, austerity, you know, very important. One of the legs is austerity. And austerity, we need to understand what it is, you know, because um, Srila Prabhupada explains that austerity, and there's another picture I'll show in a moment, but austerity is simple things. It's like a Kadashi will come twice, you know, um, mm. in a month. So you, you follow the Kadashi. Kadashi means, doesn't mean you can't eat, but it means that you don't eat grain. And sometimes you see the devotees cry. They're practically crying because I can't eat you know, my grains. I can't eat my chapati, I can't eat my this, I can't eat my favorite things. But it's only for a day. And you can still eat, but you're just not eating grain. Or the, ch the austerity is that we have japa mala to do. And we'll come to the chanting in a moment. We have, we've, we've asked to chant. 
just chant these rounds, you know? Um, chant, you know, chant Japa, chant this Maha Mantra that will purify you from the core of your heart and right. give you, you know, release from the con contaminated, you know, mentality that we've built up over many, many lifetimes. It's a little austerity. Yes, 16 rounds, not 64, not 32, 16 rounds. Yet we can't do that, you know? So there's so many small things, but we have to practice this austerity because human life is meant for this. Human life is meant for this. Human life is the boat that we use to cross over into the spiritual world. Only in a human body can we do this. We cannot do it in, a, in, in any kind of other species of life. Elephant is so big and strong. Lion is so powerful, but they can't make spiritual progress like us. But we can in this human body, regardless what human body we have, we can do these things. So we have to get the right mindset so that we know, yes, we have to do a little austerity, but that austerity is designed. I'm required to do it. Religion demands it. Okay? Spiritual advancement demands it. We have to be prepared to do it. And then cleanness. Cleanness is very important. There's so much benefit psychologically. You see, psychologically, anyone who goes to a place outside, anybody, house, anywhere, and that place is clean, you know, and things are in order, straight away you feel comfortable there. Why do people leave their homes and they go to somewhere there's a park, somewhere there's a, a pond, somewhere there's a, a pleasant atmosphere? Why do you go? Because cleanness and pleasantness, it refreshes us mentally. So similarly, taking a bath, putting clean clothes, being in a, a nice environment, we have refreshed. Cleanness is important. And there's lots of things to be said. And cleanness and illicit sex are connected. There's no way that you can be clean and be performing illicit sex. They're really not possible. It's not possible. There's lots of big connections to be made there. So I won't go deep into that, but we understand cleanness is a very important part, you know, of spiritual life, you know, in that way. And it's connected to what we eat as well. Mercy. You know, one who is not envious is a kind friend to all living entities. That mercy is important. We find in Kali Yuga, you can see, you know, you, you look at the news these days, it's predominated by racism and all of these other isms. Or if you do your own research on the internet, you will see some things that are very hard to understand. It's very hard to understand why a company will be selling maybe a food foodstuff product, it may be a medical product, but they know the product is no good. The product is not good for health. The product has got so many side effects, and yet they're not taking it off the market. They're still making you know, people buy it, but it's no good. Why? Because the pharmaceutical companies want to make more money, and they're making money from it. And this can go very deep. All the people who have made cures for cancer, cancer cures have come from nature, and every single one of those persons doctors or layman who has made a cure for cancer, you know, they've been finished. They've finished their careers. There's no mercy. Why? Because mercy is not there. Mercy combined to profit. I want profit. I don't care about mercy. So mercy is very important. The devotee must be merciful. Because just think about it like this. If, if, if it wasn't for the merciful compassion of the Lord, where would we be? And not only that, just think, we at the moment are developing our Krishna consciousness. Developing our Krishna consciousness means we start to move from a material thinking, material consciousness to godly consciousness, to Krishna consciousness. When we come to Krishna consciousness, we start to understand, I am connected to everyone. I'm connected to every living entity. I know that I'm Jivatma. I know I'm spirit soul. And I know that the ant is moving, is only moving because the spirit soul is there. If a chicken is moving, it's only moving because the spirit soul is there. If a pig is moving, it's only moving because the spirit soul is there. So I am connected to everyone. Everyone is my brother and my sister. We're all one family. If we, if we have that consciousness, that understanding genuinely, then why should, I, why should I let you suffer? How can I make you suffer? 
You, everyone is my brother and my sister. So how can I be happy to see you in difficulty, in hard times, even up to the point of death? And I, I feel nothing. No, that is not, that is not how. Mercy must be there for the devotee because our loving father is merciful. Only by mercy does he give us the opportunity to actually fulfill our desires and actually still get this human form of life or get an opportunity to evolve. Only by his mercy. He's giving all of, all of this. So we have to be merciful also. And then the other one, the fourth one is truthfulness. Truthfulness is very important. You know, I've often said to devotees who've heard me give class in South London, how sometimes, you know, families, we can be taught many different things. Our Guru Maharaj was taken by his you know, uh, grandfather and practically raised by him. I was in the home of my mother's mother and between my mother's mother and my father's father, who were very spiritual Christian people, they gave me a lot of input and especially my mother's mother. And she was teaching me from a little boy, telling me things I couldn't understand. She was saying, don't you gamble and don't you tell lies because every liar is a thief. And I couldn't see the connection. And for years, I couldn't see the connection. Every liar is a thief. She used to always put the two together. Don't tell lies because every liar is a thief. And don't gamble. She would not allow us to gamble. Even as children, you know, I'm talking about us as children playing card games. And if one pesa went on the table, she would go mad and start shouting and chastising and slapping because she could understand but the connection she's making, she says, don't tell lies. Every liar is a thief. If you tell lie, you, you're not straightforward. You're not honest. You're not truthful. And truthfulness is required in spiritual life. There's no way around these things. So I said at the beginning, these numbers are important because you cannot get past these things. You know, you cannot get past these things. When I first came back to London, you know, many years ago, I was trapped so many times and I found a parking ticket coming to me. I'm thinking, what's this ticket for? You know, a penalty ticket. What's this ticket for? I was caught in yellow boxes. I was caught in this and that. And, and I kept getting tickets. The Lord doesn't care. He didn't care that I didn't understand about the yellow zigzag boxes. He didn't care that I didn't understand. That was my ignorance. So I still had to pay the ticket. So we need to understand that these four things if we plead ignorance, you will not be able to get away with it because we are human beings. The borrower of Croydon was telling me, it's your problem. You should, you should find out. You, you should know. You're a motorist. You should know what the law is. You should find out. Therefore, pay the ticket. There's no pleading. You have to pay. So similarly, we need to understand because if we are human beings, there's a responsibility that's what Croydon was telling me. It's a responsibility. You're a motorist. You're on the road. You're supposed to know. Ignorance is no excuse. Similarly, in spiritual life, as human beings, we need to know ignorance is no excuse. We should follow these principles very carefully. And that way, we're able to make spiritual progress. But there's no possibility of making spiritual progress unless we can follow these numbers. We have to follow them. There's no way around it. Truthfulness, can somebody tell me what's your interpretation of this? What do you see? <laughs> what is it? What are you seeing? It's a very common English saying. What is it? It's a very common English saying. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Um, yeah, I don't know the saying, but it's like a wolf dressed in a sheep's clothing you know so you mistake um you mistake a person uh, uh, a innocent personality uh, but really like there's something really evil within or something like that well, you've got like, it. Don't, you've got don't, it. don't 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 judge on the looks kind of stuff yeah. yeah but also be what you say you're going to be you know okay <laughs> because it's the point of truthfulness is that don't be uh, a wolf in sheep's clothing that's the english saying the english saying is a wolf in sheep's clothing there's the wolf pretending to be a sheep, but actually he's going to eat you. He's a wolf and wolf's got a nature. His nature is not a sheep. 
So truthfulness means present yourself as you are, present things as they are. Don't use any deception. Be straightforward. Straightforwardness is a very important, and truthfulness is a very important quality of spiritual life. No less important than all the other three. They're all important. They're very simple, as said before in one class. Because something is simple, it doesn't mean it's easy. Just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. It is simple, but it's not easy to do. But we have to practice these things until we can accomplish them and achieve them and stay with them because they are essential. I am not making it up. This is coming straight from Lord Krishna through the Guru Prampra. No one can go around it. We have to do this, these things. So we don't want any deception, not in spiritual life. Outside, people can trick us and fool us. You know, fake products, fake this and fake that, you know, just to scam our money, whatever else. But in spiritual life, there should be no scamming, no cheating. It must be as it is, straightforward. And then yeah. we have the four yugas. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, Prabhu, can I make one uh, comment? Yes. You know, uh, I had heard somewhere, I can't remember, that in, in this yuga, if you just live your life as a truthful person, 100%, you can get liberated only just on this one quality. Well, Some, I, uh, I, I would not doubt that because a lot stands on truthfulness. A lot stands on truthfulness. When you deal with, you see, <laughs> the, the, the difficulty we have is that is who we associate with. But I'll tell you now, you will start to associate with a sadhu and it's no use coming. Hey, I've got super magnifying glasses. You know, because they're sadhus. So therefore they can see, they can see through everything. That you become like a sheet of glass to them. I remember my Guru Maharaj holding his hand up to me and looking at his fingernails and saying to me, and I still don't know what he meant, but I still remember his words. He says to me, he says, my disciples, he says, just as though I can see dirt in my fingernails, I can see everything in their lives. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a sadhu. That's their, that's their power. That's their ability. You cannot become a sadhu by just some rubber stamping. And those who have tried, they've fallen down. But a genuine sadhu is Krishna's representative. He's Krishna's representative. So he knows. They know. So therefore, as soon as they see you, they know. They know who's pretending. They know who is arrogant. And you'll see sometimes Guru Maharaj will, and other gurus, they'll see. They say, no, let that person know. They don't come here. Because they know they're full of pride or they're full of, you know, some kind of show. And no, they, they, they can interpret straight away. So if you're involved with spiritual people and you're truthful, you will always make progress. It's not that your truthfulness on its own is going to help you. Your truthfulness will win you the blessing of those sadhus. Mm -hmm. Because the mistake we make is thinking we do something of our own. There's no such thing like that in spiritual life. It's by the mercy of the devotees. It's by the mercy of the sadhus that you get. It's by the mercy of the guru that you make progress. Who are we? Who are you? Who am I that I can approach the Lord? If you want to put it in perspective, I tell you now. Here in this country, there's one royal lady called the queen. I, 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 get, I challenge any one of you to go to her house and knock on her door and go and see her. <laughs> Who, which, who, which one here can go and see her? Who can go and see her? You can't go near her. Why? There's no qualification. Even the, even, even the local, local um, um, political leaders, you can't even see them because you have to have a connection. You have to have a qualification. Or else you can't see them. Never mind royalty. So how are you going to, who are we to see Krishna? Who are we to approach Krishna? We have no qualification. So we have to go through that person who has the qualification. They rubber stamp us. They rubber stamp us by making us qualified. And that's why I'm telling you, please pay attention. These principles are important because all the acharyas will tell you, yes, you know, you have to do these things. These things pleases the Lord. These things are satisfying to the Lord. These things will actually show your qualification. We have to take it seriously. 
But in Kali Yuga, so that truthfulness, it can help Mataji because it will get you to stay in the association of devotees. When devotees can trust you or they like you, that is it. You, you are, your success is there because it'll allow you to serve them. Your truthfulness can help you to serve. And then that will be part of your success will, will come from that service. It's not on its own, it's in connection with the sadhus and the devotees. But in Sata Yuga, we were, the, the process for making spiritual progress was meditation. Then in Treta Yuga, it was uh, yagyas. And in Dwapa Yuga, it was deity worship. But in Kali Yuga, it's chanting the Lord's holy name. So if we understand this very nicely, we don't then act out of season, if you like. We act according to what is prescribed for this age. You know, I've seen so many people, they're very, very fond of, you know, they, they, they think everything is, yeah, a yagya will solve everything. A yagya is important. And there's certain times you need to do a yagya. You know, a, a, a wedding, a, 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 some other a function. Yagya is required. But it's not the most powerful way of making spiritual progress, you know, uh, in Kali Yuga. The most powerful way of making progress in Kali Yuga is chanting the Lord's holy name, especially in association of devotees. And we will chant one round together before we finish. So Navi, please watch me with time so that I don't run over and that we can ask questions as well as chant together. So these things are all important and they're stumbling blocks you know, spiritual progress, unless we take note of them. I'll go past that. Hmm? So moving on from that, I want to say now, any questions on anything that I've said so far? Regarding those numbers? No? Okay, then I'll move on. Faith. Faith is very important in spiritual life. Hmm? The Lord is saying in Bhagavad Gita 9.3, those who are not faithful, you know, uh, 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 in this devotional service, they can attain me. They, uh, they can't come to me. But they return to this, you know, material world. They stay on this, in, you know, uh, in this material atmosphere. They can't come to me because they have no faith. So faith is very much required in spiritual life. In the Chaitanya Chaitamrita, it is said that one should have complete conviction that simply by serving Lord Krishna, he can achieve all perfection. That is called faith. We have to believe that the Lord is um, able to do those things. And what I will do in my next class, I wasn't able to do it for this class. In my next class, I will start to prepare some slides around and give some information about the supremacy of the Lord so that that faith can be established. And we can ask questions around that because no doubt must be there. That's the whole point. No doubt must be there. We must be firmly fixed up. He is the supreme, all perfect personality of Godhead. There are three divisions of um, Krishna conscious men. Srila Prabhupada is speaking now. In the third class, those who have no faith, if they're engaged in devotional service officially with some ulterior motive. So they come, they like the prashad, they like the sing song, they like the dancing, but actually the faith is not so strong. That's the third class type of devotee who comes. Most probably they will slip after some time. They may become engaged because they haven't complete conviction in faith. It is very difficult for them to continue in Krishna consciousness. And throughout my Krishna consciousness life, I have seen this. I've seen this. You know, and sometimes the, the slip is, is connected to an incident and sometimes it's not. I know I had one very um, talented uh, God brother of mine and, um, and everything was seemed to be, we took initiation at the same time. Everything was going on fine in his spiritual life. Um, and then something happened. There was this very um, good astrologer who came through and he came through Coventry at that time I was there and he was giving reading, astrological reading to different devotees. And this devotee took a reading and you could see the symptoms and everything was there. Very beautiful body, very talented personality. You could play the violin, you could play the guitar, you could play, the, you could play about four or five different instruments. It was very brilliant and reminded. So he would not, you actually could see he was an advanced personality. 
But when he got his horoscope reading, he completely changed. He completely changed. I, in my mind, I always make that connection that that change is cause of action. And then I don't know, you may be in Krishna consciousness today doing something very, very nice, but I don't know. But I've seen many come and go. And the main reason why they go, Prabhupada is saying, their faith is not very strong. If your faith is not very strong, then you will go after some time. You'll not be able to sustain your service. We have practical experience that is in charging of missionary activities that some people come and approach themselves in Krishna consciousness with some hidden motive. So that is also a thing, the hidden motive. You know, I, I want to be the temple president. I want to be the head pujari. I want to do this. I want to be a trustee. I want to do all these things. I want to be able, because money is there as well. Uh, our temple in London didn't have much money, but some temples have a lot of money. So they come with motives. And they, again, they can't stay. They slip back into the old way Srila Prabhupada is saying here. So again, it's lack of faith. Sometimes we can't see the connection. It's lack of faith. It is only by faith, Srila Prabhupada is saying, it's only by faith that one can advance in Krishna consciousness. As far as the development of faith is concerned, one who is well versed in the literature of devotional service and has attained the stage of firm faith is called a first class person in Krishna consciousness. Faith is really important. It's there. And we will be tested. My Guru Maharaj used to say you will be tested. And most devotees, you know, I, I certainly know that Nabi and Jainti, you know, there's the devotees who are maybe most senior in this class. They have been tested. I certainly know that I've been tested. I've been tested many times. I remember when my Guru Maharaj asked me to come to South London. Um, I was actually, I didn't tell my Guru Maharaj actually. He was asking some time before, Beta, are you going to take retirement from work? And I was saying to him, um, Yes, Guru Maharaj, when they offer to me, I will take it. But then, actually, some time after that, they offered me, and I accepted it, but I didn't tell Guru Maharaj straight away. And then one day, I was serving him, and he said to me, as he always does, he always knew me at the right time to say the right thing. So he said to me, Veta, have you, have you any progress with, the, with your leaving work? I said, actually, Guru Maharaj, yes. He says, what? He called me a rascal. He said, you didn't tell me? All right, okay. And then after that, he said, he gave me one weekend to pack my things. <laughs> he gave me one weekend to pack my things and move to South London. And that was a big test of faith, you know. Uh, and incidents will happen where your faith will be tested, you know, in many different ways. But if you are firmly fixed in your faith, regardless of what the difficulties are, you will always remain with We can't hear you, uh, uh, Okay, you can't hear me at all. That's better, that's better. Okay, yeah, I was too far away, yeah. Uh, it's got uh, 10, 10 minutes. Okay, so. all right, then, then I'll, I'll go a little further because I'm happy to continue next week, but I'll just make sure I can get to the point. So I'll go past this slide because Purple has made the point. Okay, so here are some examples of some trying situations. Trying situations. You know, the biggest one, the one that's most obvious is one of Mother Draupadi there. And she's in that situation where she was trying to help herself in initially, and then she realized that, no, I will not be able to actually support myself and maintain my dignity. I simply have to depend on the Lord. But there's other scenes in the picture where sometimes, in, especially in Grihasta life, difficulties will come, you know, illness will come, you know, um, sometimes loss of spouse, whichever one will come. Sometimes, you know, um, you're in business and your business will hit a hard spot. Sometimes you're a student, sometimes you're just, you know, a, a devotee in spiritual life, but actually you, there's difficult challenges ahead. Faith is required. Faith is required. Faith will be tested at that time. So what I'd like to do, and I wanted to do, was to actually ask the devotees 
to tell me what they know about the story because these are examples of faith. Who can tell me this faith story? Who knows this? Who is that? This Prahlad Maharaj, in case you can't guess who he is. So what's the faith story? Because he was very faithful. So what's the faith story? Somebody tell me about how he demonstrated his faith, please. Is anybody there? Very bold. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about Pallad. Tell me how he demonstrated his faith. What did he do? In how many ways? What ways? Regardless of what, what was put against him, he carried on chanting the holy names, even though his father was saying that I am God and that you should worship me. The, test, the tests of faith were innumerable. There were so many from being thrown out from down a mountain to be set on fire with, um, I think, his auntie. Yes, right. Uh, and also, um, I think, put in snakes, put in dungeons, and um, all sorts, all sorts of um, torture. But that's from top of my head, I can remember. Okay. Then I'm hoping that what will happen is that um, as I ask devotees to speak out more, or answer these things, give their opinions, you'll be prompted to go back and read yourself and freshen up on that story. But all those things, Prahlad was surely tested in all the ways that you said, but he always, and in the very, very end, before Lord Nishinga appeared, he said, you know, where's your God? Where is your God? Is he in this pillar? Yes, because my God is everywhere. And then he smashed the pillar and Lord Nishinga, he came out and, and, and actually then devastated Hiranyakashipu, who was such a great demon. So Prahlad is a great demonstration of faith. And then, does anybody know this story? There's a small sparrow at the, at the, at the beach there. Does anybody know this story? I'll answer it if no one else does. Okay. Okay, answer it. Um, there's a little sparrow who had its eggs on the sand and the ocean took it away and the sparrow went up to the ocean and said, give back my eggs, otherwise I'm going to drink the whole um, ocean. To which the ocean laughed and said, oh, go ahead then. And Gurda, who is the king of the, all the birds, saw how devotional and how, um, you know, so much faith in one's ability and determination took mercy and came down and said, um, I will drink of the ocean and help you. Something along that line, Hare Krishna. Well, very right. He said, he said okay, now I've seen this little sparrow, my, my, my you know, uh, fellow bird is showing such a determination and is making a humble request. Now please return her eggs or else I shall take up the task and empty you as an ocean. And, you know, obviously the ocean complied because Garud is able to actually, you know, empty the ocean. So in that way. Then there's another one. Does anyone know this story? Navi? You know the story? Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, do you know the story? Uh, yes, Narad Muni with, is it Mugravi? This is a cobbler. Ah, oh, the cobbler, yes. Yeah. Can you somebody tell me? Yeah, sure, sure. So this is where uh, one time Narad Muni went, uh, was on this planet, and he met two personalities. One was a, uh, a Brahmin. <laughs> one was a Brahmin, and yes. the other was a cobbler. Yes. And, um, Navarmuni said, I'm going to go and see Lord Vishnu, so you can, uh, if there's anything you want me to ask, uh, please let me know. Uh, so the Brahmin said, ask the Lord, um, will I be seeing him in, in my next life? And the cobbler said, um, yes, you can ask the Lord. Uh, how many lifetimes it will take before I can see him. So Narad Muni went to the Lord and the Lord answered him, 
because he asked him about the questions from both. And now uh, the Lord said to him, well, for the Brahmin, you can tell him, he, it'll take him millions of lifetimes. But the mm -hmm. copper, you can tell him, he will see me at the end of this life itself. Mm -hmm. And Narmuni was very surprised. And he said to, Narayan said to him, just tell them that when you saw me, I, you, I was uh, threading a uh, elephant through a eye of a needle. Mm -hmm. So then Narmuni came, he saw the uh, Brahman and the he said to the Brahmin, actually, the Lord said it will take millions of years. And then Narad Muni and uh, the Brahmin said, no, you never went to see the Lord. What was he doing anyway? Oh, he was threading an elephant through eye of a needle. Ah, there you see. How can he do that? <laughs> and then he went to the cobbler and the cobbler said, asked him, what did Narad, uh, what did Narayan say? And, and uh, the co um, Brahm, uh, Narad said to the cobbler, yes, uh, at the end of this life, you will see the Lord. And the cobbler was amazed. And he asked also, what was my Lord doing? He was threading an elephant through a eye of Oh, wow. And Narad asked him, do you actually believe that? He said, yeah. He said, of course, if he can put a, a tree in a little seed, <laughs> there's a difficulty in putting that in. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Very good. So these are stories. Thank you, Navi Prabhu, and all the others. It's a little story, and these stories are very good because they demonstrate faith. And faith is required, you know, in spiritual life. Without it, we're going to stumble, we're going to bumble, and we're going to go backwards. And the whole idea is that we don't go backwards, we gradually, steadily keep moving forward in our devotional life. Here's another story, one last story. Does anybody know this story? It's, 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 I, was, I was just about to call your name because I know you know this story. Yes? Oh, okay, so this is uh, Shabri and uh, Ram and Lakshman. And Shabri was uh, told by her guru that um, she'll get Darshan of Ram one day. So, um, so every single day, um, she she uh prepared uh she got the berries um and uh just decorated the place for his arrival and she did this every day um just on the um on um uh, on what her guru said so she had full faith in the guru and then she eventually did see ram exactly yeah. very good thank you and she took a lot of criticism you know because they were saying you know that it doesn't actually say it um, <clears throat> but I've seen it in, in movies that they, you know, the sages and others, other devotees with Park Pastor said, you know, Pagalanti is doing it again. <laughs> you know, but the fact is that she wasn't mad at all. She was actually being very faithful to her promise. So in that way, uh, one of the great tests of faith is when we don't get what we want, but we're still able to actually say thank you to the Lord and keep going. So faith is very important. And at this point, I'll stop um, because I do want to take some general questions and then I can pick up and continue next week. So, Nabi Prabhu, first of all, any, any questions from anyone? Yes, yes. Not only about this class, but about any other aspect of, you know, spiritual life. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah, Prabhu, in the last class, you explained, you know, the types of uh, liberation. Yes. Yeah, can you give some more examples? Because sometimes I read in Bhagavatam, this person got this kind of liberation, this person got this. So I, I'm slightly confused. What is the difference between the different liberations, you know? Well, you... It, it, I, I can't. I can't um, serve up for the slides, but okay. I think my reply to you was that every other type attaining the same body as the Lord, the same planet as the Lord, the same, um, um, there's something else. Same features as the Lord. Same features of the Lord. But they're all, they're all as you reply to you, they're all good. There's no distinction between them. 
the only the only one where there's a distinction is that when you go to the brahma jyoti when you go to the brahma jyoti oneness with the lord the devotee doesn't want because oneness means you're going to the brahma jyoti and then you are there in in that consciousness that beautiful blissful consciousness but you actually you're not in service mode so you cannot go through that brahma jyoti into the spiritual world you cannot go into provide and to join with the Lord in devotional service. So that liberation is the one that you don't want. The devotees don't want that. The Vaishnavas don't want that. We don't want to go into the blissful Brahma Jyoti. It's very spiritual. It's, it's the glowing effulgence of the Lord at the entrance of the spiritual world. We don't want that liberation. You're certainly not on planet Earth. You don't have a material body, but we don't want that liberation. But all the other liberations, they're perfectly fine. Actually, we compete, you know, um, my car is better than your car, my house is bigger than your house. But in the spiritual world, there's no such competition. Mm -hmm. not, between, not between the different varieties of devotees who are there, of the living entities. There's no competition between the devotee who is in a tree body and the devotee who is actually in a, some kind of a, whatever body that you're in, everyone is fully conscious. There's no competition, there's no status, there's no class issue going on in the spiritual world. That's not there, it's non-existent. These are material qualities. So whatever liberation you get, you know, it's according to your desire. The Lord is so kind that he will fulfill our desires. So you must see what desire do you have to serve the Lord, you know, but to be with him in, in the spiritual world, that is bliss. That is complete bliss. And that is what we want. It's that liberation we want. Does that help, Mataji? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Was there any, any more questions? Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Um, I have... What what do you do if the if the faith is just not there? Because and it um it's like um you need something before you can put faith into it. I don't know, like what what happens if it's if it's just not there? Well because it's it, it's just it's, it just doesn't seem to happen no matter how much you may want it, but it just doesn't come. Okay. Well, I think faith is a thing, it's like love is a thing. It grows, you know, faith is a thing, it grows, you know. Uh, I can tell you now that the way I chant my rounds now, you know, and the number of rounds, the way I read Bhagavad Gita now, and the length of time I spent reading Bhagavad Gita, it wasn't the same in the beginning. It wasn't the same. It's much greater now. So it's something that grows. So what I would say, if that spontaneous love is not there, that spontaneous faith is not there, I would say because your uh, mode of goodness is there, then I would say stay with the program because sooner or later you'll find you will establish it, you will develop it, it will grow. It will grow and develop and become stronger. That's what I would say. But I'd also say that these things, they grow in the association of devotees. So be very careful who you associate with because some devotees in the association, your faith will grow and become stronger. Others, it won't grow. Actually, it will be diminished. So you do have to choose your association and then follow the principles, follow the regulations, and then you'll see the more we abide by those. The whole idea, Srila Prabhupada was reading this morning in Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto, and he was saying that the very first thing a devotee has to do is to establish their own sense of identity, their spiritual identity. There has to be established firmly. And when that is established, then you have to, then next thing you have to do, you have to establish. And I will speak on this in more length at some other time. You then have to establish your sense of who the Lord is. But everything begins with your sense of, I am not this body, I'm spirit soul. So all the regulative principles and all those basic things are designed to help us to become established in a sense of spiritual identity. The more we can establish that, the more we're going to actually be able to gradually, gradually grow our faith. 
but you also need good association. So think about your association. You need those who will actually help you, you know, and think about your habits as well. Think about doing those devotional things that will help it to grow. And it's over time it will grow. It will grow over time. Srila Prabhupada, I think it was the last class, or maybe it was Friday class, I was thinking that Srila Prabhupada says you have to do with time. You have to endeavor with patience. You have to endeavor with patience. And he was giving the example how we started this movement single-handedly. No money, no men, no nothing. But he had the confidence and the patience to continue until everything started to take off. So we have to have the same thing in our spiritual life. We have to continue until eventually it makes sense. Eventually it comes together. But we have to grow those things. They have to be grown and developed. Does that help, Priti? Yes, Prabhu, it does help. And I think in the beginning when you mentioned about um, loving Krishna, I think it, even for me, I think it comes even to that point. It's like I don't know Krishna. We can read about him and everything. But if uh, if sometimes it just, sometimes I don't know, my in my mind somewhere it can just come as a, it's a character, you know. Um, yeah. It's it's uh, it's it's Hindu Hindu uh, what is it mythology just I don't know um, just not getting that kind of connection where um, I feel like doing devotional service onto that specific personality rather I you know me I believe there's something there but then just uh, um, yeah then keeping I'm Krishna as the topmost is quite difficult because like that that kind of spontaneous love thing is is, is not there. So okay. it's just difficult then, to put faith there as well. Then you've given me confirmation because what I said just now about my next class will, will actually, <clears throat> next Sunday class will have a lot more about establishing Lord Krishna as a supreme personality. That would be there. But there's a reason why, and I know I don't have much time for this, but there's a reason why when Narad Muni met Dhruva and instructed Dhruva into actually doing his tapasya to achieve his ambitions, he left him for some time and Dhruva was making very good progress. And then Narada come back, came back and saw him. And then he, when I read it, I thought this is a strange thing he told him to do. He was making very nice progress, Dhruva, you know. But then Narad said to him, now you need to actually make a murti of the Lord and start to worship that. And I remember thinking about it for some time. Why does he have to make a murti of the Lord? And then later on I understood. So what I would say to you is that devotees like you who are good natured, you definitely, you know, I wouldn't call you in the mode of ignorance, you're more in the mode of goodness. I would say to you, spend more time chanting and think about some feature of the Lord that you like. Uh, you can start with just a picture um, deity um, and then start to focus on that because you need to build a relationship with the Lord. It's the relationship that's missing. The chanting purifies the heart. So do more chanting and then get into a relationship Whoever, whichever um, feature of the Lord you're most attracted to, then start to get into more of a devotional relationship with the Lord and you will see. He will reciprocate with you. He reciprocates with everyone who actually surrenders to him. That's the, that's the experience of devotees. He reciprocates. He will find a way to let you know, no, I'm not a figment of your imagination. I'm very real. Over time, he will actually show you that is so. But I would say start with your chanting. Yeah, thanks, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Nabi, over to you. Uh, just, um, Govinda, did you have a question to ask? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, one day I asked Guru Maharaj that how can we uh, increase our faith? Then Guru Maharaj replied that uh, read Bhagavad Gita, read Srila Prabhupada's book, then our faith will be increased. And uh, the same as the uh, last photo shows uh, Shabri Mata and Lord Ramchandra. Uh, Guru Maharaj years before, he used to uh, give very nice lecture on that. He yeah. said that uh, Shabri Mata was very small girl, a very small girl. Then uh, 
uh, the guru, uh, her guru told her that uh, one day Lord Ram will come, will come. So uh, be ready to welcome him. Hmm. So from that day, every from from that moment, every day, Mata Shabri uh, collected fresh uh, uh, fruits, uh, uh, fresh uh, pluck uh, flowers, uh, and put on the on the path where Lord Ram will come. So every day, even even she don't get discouraged that uh, uh, okay today he hasn't come, don't know tomorrow will come or not. Never he she think like that. Uh, she she always get prepared. Always her fame her faith day by day increased because okay today Lord Ram hasn't come. Tomorrow he will come. Tomorrow he will come. Tomorrow he will come. And the day when Lord Ram came. Uh, her eyes were filled with tears, could not see even Lord Ram. Yes. Uh, then, as Guru Mahat explained, that he asked nothing, just she, uh, she said to Lord Ram, Give me the, my eyesight so that I can admire your, your beautiful <laughs> faith. Right. So, like this, Guru Mahat confirmed that our faith will be increased uh, as we read book. And as you said, Prabhu, we must associate with devotees. Then, this this is definitely we we will we will increase our faith. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that, Govind. Very very nice. Appreciate that. Hey, anybody else? Um, any questions or comments? Okay, so um, Karuna Bunda, we can chant the uh, Nashinga Kavach for everybody's protection. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Shishi Lakshmi Yashinga Deva Ki Jai, Pahran Maharaj Ki Jai, Shabu Kupadi Ki Jai, Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. Nashinga Kavacham Bakshe, Prahade Nadi Tampura, Sarva Raksha Karam Punyam, Sarva Padravanashanam. Sarva Sampat Karam Chaiva Swarga Moksha Pradayakam Dhyadva Narashimham Devesham Hema Simhasanastitam Vibritasyam Trinayanam Sharad Indusham Abdamham Lakshmalingita Vamangam Vibhuti Birupashritam Chaturbhujam Komalangam Swarna Kundara Shobhitam Shriyasu Shobhito Raskam Ratnaki